And you also mentioned you went through uh, a, like a growth period, right? Where you quit your job. And I watched, you know, one of your videos on your YouTube channel. I think there was a channel trailer where you mentioned that you tried basically, you know, all the programs out there. You tried affiliate marketing, you tried MLM and all of this shit. So uh, like walk me through that, like, because I believe that a lot of people can relate to that, that they yeah. come online because of the, you know, unrealistic expectations uh, and the way, you know, it's being sold. Um, what was your experience there? Yeah, so back to Aaron Hubbard, when I was in the car business, the guy was never working on like selling cars. He'd be mm -hmm. there just as much as me, but he'd sell <laughs> like eight cars a month. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? And I, I put I put this all in the book too. And mm -hmm. when I would ask him like, what are you doing, man? Like, we're supposed to be selling cars. You're on your computer, you, you don't do shit. Yeah. He'd get all offended. And he's like, man, I'm working on my business. I'm like, what business? And he's like, my online business. And mm -hmm. at that time, it was like, oh, you know, online business. So you scam mm -hmm. people, right? Same mindset, <laughs> yeah. most uneducated idiots have. Mm -hmm. And he starts talking to me more and I've become pretty good friends with him. I'm still really good friends with him. And mm -hmm. he starts showing me different things that he's doing. So literally every company that he was in, uh, at affiliate marketing, MLM, whatever like he's just introducing me of course getting the commission off of me sure. but the thing is that guy would show up to my house anytime any day to this day to help me on anything without asking for anything in return and so he's like i'm doing drop shipping with ebay mm -hmm. so there was this company called ds domination okay tried that <laughs> uh started doing you know a few hundred dollars a week here and there mm -hmm. then i actually realized the only reason i was making money is because uh, I did my math wrong. I was selling it the cheapest on eBay and I was actually losing money. So yeah. like maybe $500 a week was coming in, 600 was going out. Oh shit. So I did that. And then I tried a company called Empower Network. Empower oh, Network yeah. was an MLM, but they had tangible products. For example, they had a blogging platform. They called it Kalatu Blogging. The, the guy that owned it, David Wood, crazy dude, mm -hmm. went crazy. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> Super weird dude. There was a video of him on YouTube rubbing a freaking lime on his head. Yeah, and his head was like bleeding. Weird guy mm -hmm. fell off the face of the earth. That company crashed. Mm -hmm. I started to learn how to blog though, and I was mm -hmm. making blog posts like four days a week for yeah. maybe a year and a half or two years. And mm -hmm. that experience, I'm like, well, blog post, nobody sees it, so I have to learn SEO. So I taught myself mm -hmm. that over a period of a year or two. And so I, I kind of obtained these little micro skills. Like I knew what drop shipping was, hadn't really succeeded in it, kind of dabbled. Mm -hmm. Knew what MLMs were, played in them a little bit, kind of mm -hmm. dabbled, made a couple commissions here and there, nothing sustainable, didn't have a system, didn't, didn't mm -hmm. have some sort of infrastructure where I could clearly tell if I do this, I'll get this result or make this money. Mm -hmm. So Aaron kind of brought me everywhere. And then there was a company called, um, uh, a company called Digital Altitude. Oh, yeah. And a guy named Michael Force owned it. And all these companies went out of business because they, they, they were not reliable. They mm -hmm. did not fulfill needs. They didn't fulfill promises. They under, under delivered and over promised. Yeah. And so every single one of these I was a part of, mm -hmm. I, I recognized that after being in them for a few months, I saw this trend and I'm like, man, I can't trust other people's bullshit mm -hmm. to make my money, but it mm -hmm. did expose me. So mm -hmm. by the time I had quit my job, I was, I tried the DS domination drop shipping. I mm -hmm. tried the uh, empower network blogging and network marketing stuff. And I kind of got exposed to it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I dabbled in a few things, online sales pro. It was like a mm -hmm. sales oh, yeah. funnel sort of system, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I learned a little bit about that and I did mm -hmm. a little bit of affiliate marketing with it. And so every single one of these areas I failed in, I didn't mm -hmm. scale in, I wasn't able to climb up. I just dabbled and got mm -hmm. like micro results like most yeah. people do when they join stuff yeah. like that. A sale here, a sale there, mm -hmm. and then it's hard, they give up and quit. Mm -hmm. So I kind of got exposed to all of that. Mm -hmm. And then really what happened is when I quit my job, I was just depressed to the point mm -hmm. of tears and left and right, nobody believed in me. Nobody mm -hmm. was like, yeah, I think you'll succeed or did, not my parents, nobody, nobody. Yeah. Aaron was the only guy that was like, dude, quit the fucking job mm -hmm. and go do some shit. Mm -hmm. And so when I quit, I remember driving home and I told myself out loud in the car, you're not ever working for somebody else again. You're not getting a job and you're gonna figure out how to do this. So 
I did that. And I firmly believe it was putting myself in the position to win where my back was against the wall and the only way to go is forward. That was one. It mm -hmm. was also the Les Brown calls it the inspiration of desperation. I was desperate to succeed. My back was against the wall. I was depressed as hell and there was no going back. There was no going left, going right, only forward. So I had to do something for myself. My mindset was I'm not going to fail. I can't fail and I'm not going back that direction. So I need to produce. So it was all of that. It was the inspiration of desperation. It was forcing myself to go into production mode. It was putting myself in survival mode. It was putting myself where my back's against the wall and there is no retreating. And it was having been exposed. At least my mm -hmm. mind was wrapped around, hey, there's possibilities. I've done all these things and I failed at every single one of them, but I, I kind of understand a little bit. I see that mm -hmm. there there is an opportunity and that there are people succeeding in this. Yeah, so it was yeah. all of that that mm -hmm. enabled me to get results. Okay, so you basically have been sort of like a jack of all trades, but the master of none at the beginning. And when did you realize, all right, I mean, like, obviously, that's the point where you, you know, you quit your job, you went home, you were, you know, against the back. But when did you realize, all right, so Instagram, that's probably one of the things that you basically became a master in and then focus and doubled down on that. When did you realize that? Yeah, so uh, let me see. So in no, uh, November 6, 2015, mm -hmm. that was about 363 days before I quit my job. So about a year mm -hmm. before I quit my job, I started Vulcan Customs, my metal fabrication mm -hmm. business. And at that point, I had done the this will be really good for people to know. So I had done the blogging stuff with the mm -hmm. Kalatu system, whatever. I learned how to blog, learned a little bit about like websites because their mm -hmm. platform was kind of a little bit like WordPress. Mm -hmm. So I learned a little bit about websites, learned a little bit about blogging, and at least knew how to take a picture, write some shit, put it on a website. So when I started Vulcan Customs, I was able to do that. And then I thought to myself, well, how am I going to sell? Mm -hmm. And Aaron had always been a big Facebook marketer. And I saw all of these people on Facebook comment, you know, if you yeah. want to make money online, <laughs> if you want to earn $5 today, mm -hmm. let us know. Mm -hmm. All these bullshit Z tier internet mm -hmm. marketers not getting any results. So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to go on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Where can I go? Instagram was starting to trend. People were starting to know about it. And I'm like, okay, I'll do Instagram. So mm -hmm. I'm like blogging about my metal fabrication and getting my products on my site and then building Instagram at the same time. And mm -hmm. all I'm doing is like going, okay, who, who are the type of people that would like my shit? Well, mm -hmm. they're the kind of people that um, ride Harley Davidson's. They mm -hmm. follow Harley Davidson accounts. They like custom bikes. These are the mm -hmm. kind of people that are like blue collar workers, nine to five, five days a week, but on mm -hmm. the weekends and evenings are working on their bike and putting all of their money into their motorcycles. Yeah. So I need to find accounts on Instagram that uh, are just like pictures of custom bikes. Mm -hmm. I need to find Harley Davidson accounts and Harley Davidson dealerships and engage and follow and comment a network with the people that mm -hmm. are following these motorcycle accounts. And as I'm doing that, I'm hoping simultaneously these people are going to see that, come over to my account and see the awesome mm -hmm. stuff that I'm doing. Yeah. And I did that from November 2015 through February 2016. And in mm -hmm. February 2016, I go to my accountant and I said, hey, uh, what's different about this year is I started a business. So I'm still at Hyundai, but I started a mm -hmm. business. And he's like, okay, no problem. So we'll do a business tax return. How much money have you made so far? I was like, nothing. Mm -hmm. And then he took his glasses off and he looked at me as like, you've been in business for three and a half months and you haven't made anything mm -hmm. like, like I was crazy. I was like, yeah. no, but I will uh -huh. literally a week later, a couple people messaged me on Instagram and they're like, Hey, uh, we want this. They screenshotted a picture of one of the backrests that I had mm -hmm. made. And they're like, we want this. How much? And I was like, uh, $600. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, how do we pay? And I was like, oh, well, shit, fuck, I don't know how you pay. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't have a, <laughs> make a PayPal account really quick. Yeah. And, then, uh -huh. and I sold like $2,500 worth of, they call them sissy bars. They're passenger mm -hmm. backrests for motorcycles. Sold about mm -hmm. $2,500 worth. I'm like, okay, something's working here. So mm -hmm. I kept having a place for people to go and reference my products by building my site out. 
which mm. I had learned by being introduced to this Kalatu bullshit yeah. blogging platform uh -huh. by Aaron Hubbard. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I had a little bit of skill there. Now, all of a sudden it's turning into something. And then my thoughts about, Hey, I'm going to go on Instagram, try to get a competitive advantage, find mm. people that are already following accounts, products and services similar to mine, engage with mm. them, follow them. Hopefully they come back and reciprocate. Mm -hmm. That started paying off after a few months. So I continued mm -hmm. putting effort on both the site and on Instagram. I ended up being able to rank my website to page one of Google mm -hmm. for the term custom sissy bar and custom mm -hmm. sissy bars, which provided nice. me about two to 2,500 visits per month to my website. Awesome. I would get about seven or eight sales per month from that mm -hmm. people would inquire via email or they'd comment on my google plus profile mm -hmm. when that actually existed uh plus people were finding me on instagram and and mm -hmm. messaging me and so between the two i would get about 15 sales per month my average order was uh i would say four to five hundred dollars so mm -hmm. i'm getting to the point where i'm making four five maybe fifty five hundred dollars per month awesome but net on that it's mm -hmm. about $2,300 for me and okay. I'm still working 63 hours per week at the mm. dealership yeah. and then I'm working about 40 hours a week for myself so yeah there's a 13 month period mm -hmm. between October November 2015 mm -hmm. and when I quit my job mm -hmm. when I'm working 100 hours per week